everybody. Uh, welcome to another episode of Dr. Jill Live. Today we have an absolute treat and an honor to be with the well-known Blue Zone expert, Dan Butner. I'll introduce him in just a moment, but just as a back uh, information, you can find my podcast on YouTube, Stitcher, iTunes, wherever you watch or listen to video um, or audio podcast. And you can go there, uh, leave a review, let us know uh, what you'd like to hear more of. Well, today, um, without further ado, I want to introduce my special guest, Dr. Dan, not doctor, sorry, Dan, Dan Buettner. <laughs> you should have an honorary doctorate. He's an Explorer National Geographic Fellow, an award-winning journalist and producer, and New York Times bestselling author. He discovered the five places in the world dubbed Blue Zones, where people live the longest, healthiest lives. His articles about these places have been featured in New York Times Magazine and National Geographic, and these issues were the most popular in that publication. Uh, Butner's work is now spread across the country in partnership with municipal governments, large employers, and health insurance companies to implement Blue Zone projects in communities, workplaces, and universities. Blue Zone projects are being um, initiatives that are apply lessons from these Blue Zones to the entire communities by focusing on changes to the local environment public policy, and social networks. And that's where health starts. <laughs> so I love this. This program has dramatically improved the health and um, of more than 5 million Americans to date. Now, as just a little backstory, Dan, I want to tell how we met. Um, first, we were in Nicoya, which is one of the blue zones in Costa Rica, both speaking for YPO. Um, and I'll never forget, to my embarrassment, um, I've known about blue zones, and somehow I didn't put your name to the blue zones. I went up to you, shook your hand, and said, hi, Dan, my name is Jill. What do you do? <laughs> and then as soon as I realized your, uh, your work and all the amazing stuff you brought to light, um, I was a little embarrassed, but you were kind and gracious and so humble. And I'll never forget that because that just um, allowed me to admire you even more in your humility. You, you could have said a lot of things about what the work that you've already done. And um, you were kind and gracious to me. And then recently we were both at Milken and uh, with Jeff Bland, who gave you an honorary functional medicine degree. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So that was really exciting because what we do in functional medicine is so uh, attuned to what you've done with the Blue Zones and such, uh, if anyone's heard me on this podcast, you've heard me mention Dan's name and the Blue Zones and his work because it's such a foundation of how to live well and prevent and reverse chronic disease. So with all of that, Dan, welcome to the show. Well, it's great to see you again after a few months. And to be fair, I didn't recognize you as the illustrious author of Unexpected right away. So, you know, had I known that, I would have, uh, I would have been even more humble. Oh, <laughs> you are so kind. Um, but it, it was just, it's been a, such a pleasure and an honor. And um, as luck would have it, that we landed together for two incredible events. And now you've got a new book when this is being released, you guys can all get a copy of your own. I want to be sure and show you because the book is worth a thousand. It is a beautiful um, I have some um, notes there, but this book is so well done, so full of great information. We're going to talk about that today, but it's called The Blue Zones, The Secrets to Living Longer. And I want to be sure and encourage if you're listening to grab your copy right away. This is something that you will, it's a coffee table kind of book. And yet it's one of those that you want to just like look through. And so it's one of those where you can read through cover to cover, or you can pop into the sections and the different continents and areas where you've discovered blue zones. Before we dive into that, I love story. So Dan, tell us a little bit about where did you grow up and how did you get into interested and introduced to National Geographic into this work? How did it all start? Yeah, unlike a, a lot of health gurus, which I'm not, um, I, I'm, I'm an explorer. I, w w when you graduated from university and went off to do useful and productive things, which led you into functional medicine, I was kind of a truant. I I, I biked from Alaska to Argentina. I biked around the world and I biked the length and width of Africa. It took me eight years. I set three records, Guinness records along the way. But uh, for the most part, it taught me how to be sensitive to other cultures. Uh, I developed a, a, a deep interest in the wisdom of traditional peoples um, and great empathy as well. Uh, that led me to another on my first company called the Quest Network, I developed a way, a uh, method of exploration that let an online audience direct a team of experts uh, to solve a mystery, which involved harnessing the wisdom of the crowd. And I think we solved the mystery of why the Maya civilization collapsed. And we took on another dozen or so mysteries. Uh, most of our, our um, virtual explorers were students. And um, 
The last expedition of that series was one to Okinawa, Japan. In 1999, the World Health Organization published a study finding that Okinawa had the longest disability-free life expectancy in the world. So that means they were living the most years in full health. They weren't getting diabetes or heart disease or cancer or, or um, dementia at anywhere near the rates that we're suffering today. And I said, aha, that's a good mystery. And uh, I applied my sort of sleuthing skills to trying to figure out what Okinawa was doing well. And um, that, uh, that led to the initial interest of Blue Zones. Wow. And did you uh, come up with a name, Blue Zones, or where did that come from? Well, yes and no. Uh, the no part of it is my colleague, Dr. Gianni Pass uh, in Sardinia, identified the Blue Zone there. And he first used the term Blue Zone as it applied to one very special mountainous area in Sardinia. And I met him on assignment for National Geographic. And uh, I borrowed his term which you know, was only used in one academic journal. And I applied it uh, uh, worldwide, which there are now five recognized blue zones around the world. And uh, I'm responsible for the other four. And also I include you know, the Sardinian blue zone in my kind of meta analysis of longevity hotspots. Yeah, so this is so fascinating because as I hear your story, you you were an explorer, but what you had that was unique that not everybody had was this detective mind, this ability to put puzzle, puzzles together and put pieces together. And it's interesting because like Dr. Jeff Bland and myself in our own little world, it's really that curiosity that is the mark of a genius. And I think that fits you so well because you were curious enough to say, huh, there's something interesting here, and then start to really look. How did you then start to find the zones? Did you first look at data from longevity and then go there? Or did you actually, how did that happen with the next blue zones that you found and discovered? Yeah, I, you know, I, I was very honored that Jeff uh, honored me with the honorary functional medicine. I think, you know, we share a lot of the same uh, sort of approaches. They're uh, based in science, but they sort of go a little bit deeper than I would say medical. But I, I work for National Geographic, and they don't publish anything unless it's evidence-based or, or at least an expert. So we had to start with um, uh, population studies done by demographers. And there's a handful of demographers in the world who specialize in this uh, process of identifying longevity hotspots. Um, the, the expert I worked with was out of uh, University of Belgium. His name is Michel Poulain. I hired him for two of the expeditions and worked with him on uh, two of the other expeditions. But essentially what they do is they find a swath of birth records that go back about 100 years. And then they follow those people for 10 decades and they uh, find out how many are left at the end. And then they adjust that number for immigration and emigration because people come and go. And then you get a number, you get a number of uh, centenarians. And this process can actually be done even uh, going farther back. So for a blue zone, you wanna know how many centenarians lived in an area saved for the last 150 years. And it's mathematically intensive, it takes the better part of a year. Uh, but when we say that people are living the longest here, we have very you know, indisputable mathematica, mathematical demographic data to underpin that. So the, once you know that people there are living longer, then you engage a whole other litany of experts to help use established processes to evaluate how or why or find the correlations. And for that, <laughs> we do use epidemiology, we use anthropology, we use medical research. I rely on studies that others have made. And I had a very good uh, uh, board of academic advisors that included Jay Oshansky, Tom Pearls, um, Bob Kane, uh, even Ansel Keys, who first identified the Mediterranean diet, was the first expert who, who sort of anointed this project and, and, and helped me down a path of, um, I like to say, scientific responsibility in um, distilling what I write about in my books. Huh. 
tremendous because again, what you've brought, what I love is right now, whether you're on social media or even at the local bookstore, you're going to see a milieu of books that say the keto diet, the paleo diet, the you name it, what diet, vegetarian, vegan, and they all disagree. And there's all these camps. What I love that you have come to find out with your research is often it's not about even the type or the macronutrient of the food. It's about how it's grown and the community. So let's dive into actually some of the things actually about diet, but about the bigger picture, which you bring about human connection, meaning and purpose in life and start to give us the lay of the land as far as what creates a blue zone and why you can have different food groups um, that are not very popular right now, sometimes like the potatoes or the um, things like that. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Well, let's start with diet, and then we'll talk about the things that surround diet, because a lot of people are interested in diet, and I'd say it's about half of the of the prescriptive. But so, if you want to know what a hundred year old or a population of hundred year olds ate to live to be a hundred, you can't just ask them what they've been eating lately, because they don't remember. You know, if I ask you what you had for lunch two weeks ago Tuesday, you probably couldn't tell me. So it's really unfair to ask a 100-year-old what they were eating when they were kids or when they were 20 or newly married or, or newly retired because diets change over time. So to get at that, we found dietary surveys conducted by local, local national universities or the government, and we found 155 of them in all five blue zones going back to about 1930. 1920 in some cases. And then I had a, a Harvard uh, scientist named Walter Willett help me do what's called a meta-analysis. And um, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's oversimplified and sort of a worldwide average. And on average, traditionally speaking, people in blue zones were eating 90 to 100% whole food plant-based. The five foods that the five food groups you see, I'm actually going to add a sixth here, uh, but uh, they're all eating whole grains, greens, tubers like sweet potatoes and potatoes, nuts, beans, and whatever seasonal fruit or vegetable happens to be growing now, you know, which varies time to time. But that's what they're eating. They, they do eat meat, but it's a celebratory food uh, about five times per month and a, a portion about the size of a deck of cards. They eat very little fish, surprisingly. Uh, they, blue zones tend to be inland. Uh, they often eat a little bit of cheese, but not a lot. Um, and they drink coffee, tea, water, and wine. Those are the, the five beverages you see. Um, so it's not vegan. Um, it's not keto. Uh, it's, it's something in between. It, it's a blue zone diet. And um, it doesn't focus on any micronutrient. Um, you know, you can break down the macronutrients, but I find that mostly confuses people. If, if you get people eating a whole food, plant-based diet, you're 95% the way there to eating to 100 yeah. for most people. You know, I know there are people with dietary restrictions and I know there are outliers, but if, if, if Americans could eat that way, we'd probably add 10 years to our life expectancy over eating the standard American diet. Yeah, Dan, what I love and what I'm hearing, I think deeper than what they're eating, which is like not only um, good foods in their regions, but they're connected to the earth. Many of these people probably grow some of their own food. And I think the thing that might be missing is actually what's absent, which is soda, processed foods, all the things, the chemical laden and the environmental toxic load. As I hear you talk about this, it sounds like they're really eliminating or in areas where they're not getting all these additives, preservatives, the, the processed foods, the because there's a, quite a variety and there's some commonalities for sure. But it's almost like it's it's more like the absence of all of this garbage that is in the standard American diet. The absence of garbage, and I would say the addition of a lot more fiber than we eat and many different strains of fiber. And I think that's largely overlooked yeah. as, a, as a, you know, a nutrient. But, um, and also, you know, bacteria, and there's, there's not going to be as sterile as the food. And the other thing, you have to, like you pointed out, the people in blue zones all have gardens and they work the gardens into their 890s and 100s. So it's hard to 
say, are people healthy because they're eating out of their garden or because they're working in their garden? You know, it all kind yeah. of it Would kind you- of uh, clusters together as a set of behaviors. But it's so clear that no matter if you're looking for populations of uh, successful agers in Asia or Latin America or Europe or the United States, the same patterns you see over and over again. Mm-hmm. Hey, everybody. I just stopped by to let you know that my new book, Unexpected, Finding Resilience Through Functional Medicine, Science and Faith, is now available for order wherever you purchase books. In this book, I share my own journey of overcoming life-threatening illness and the tools and tips and tricks and hope and resilience I found along the way. This book includes practical advice for things like cancer and Crohn's disease and other autoimmune conditions, infections like Lyme or Epstein-Barr and mold and biotoxin-related illness. What I really hope is that as you read this book, you find transformational wisdom for health and healing. If you want to get your own copy, stop by readunexpected.com. There you can also collect your free bonuses. So grab your copy today and begin your own transformational journey through functional medicine in finding resilience. Makes so much sense. And from a a gut expert's perspective, the microbiome diversity is king with longevity. And what you're describing is a diet that will create a diverse microbiome. People think it's probiotics and all these things they take. It's not. It's the food that we eat, the diversity, the in-season food, fresh from the soil whenever possible versus trucked across for two weeks on a refrigerated, you know, semi-trailer. So really exciting to hear that and to encourage people. One other thought that I just learned recently is nitric oxide allows our blood vessels to dilate. So as we age, I think at the age of 40, we have about 50% production. At the age of 65, we have about 15% production. And this is our heart, our lungs, our sexual function, all the good things that happen and that decline as we age. Well, guess what? All these plants um, from the soils, whether it's tubers, beets, um, turnips, potatoes, and leafy greens, which are a huge part of what you just said, are so rich in nitric oxide. And you would think, okay, organic produce is great. Well, guess what? Organic produce actually has very little nitrates because organically they can't add the nitrates to the soil. So I wonder if one other little piece of the puzzle is they're growing foods. They're able to add the fertilizer and the kind of normal stuff that farmers do to the soils and they're producing nitrate rich crops that are actually, you know, plant-based. I love that. (laughs) Who knows? But just a thought. Um, Could be. What are some of the other things? So obviously there's a lot of things that um, I resonate with lifestyle that you've taught us and and, uh, related to meaning and purpose and and, and some sort of a belief in higher power, although they're very different. Tell us about these other things. Well, you know, if you're listening right now to us, you might be leaning in and saying, oh, I I like what this damn Buettner is saying about this longevity diet. I am going to start eating a whole food plant-based diet now and I'm going to uh, eat more beans and more tubers. But we know from the literature that people who get on diets, they fail almost all the time. Uh, probably about 97% of people who start diets have failed uh, within two years. And when it comes to longevity, those no short-term fix. You have to think about things you're going to do for decades or a lifetime, not just for a number of months or a couple of years. So the big insight that Blue Zones offer us is how to keep doing the right thing and avoiding the wrong thing for long enough so we don't develop heart disease, type 2 diabetes, several types of cancers, and dementia. Most of which, by the way, and you probably know this, Joe, are avoidable. So what they do, uh, first of all, they, they're, the people they surround themselves with uh, in Okinawa, it's called a moai, but a group of four or five people. They tend to be people who share these values, people whose idea of, of recreation is gardening or walking, of uh, friends who are also eating mostly a whole food plant-based diet. They don't have some friend who's, you know, barbecuing wieners or, you know, meeting for the Happy Meal at McDonald's. Uh, they care about you on a bad day. So they have a social circle that helps. Their, their lives tend to be underpinned by purpose. So they're not waking up with existential angst. It's, they're more likely to take their medicines and uh, keep on a healthy lifestyle. Uh, they live in places where every time they go to work or a friend's house or out to eat, it occasions a walk. Uh, they have gardens out back. 
and they don't have mechanical conveniences to do their work. So they're mindlessly doing physical activity all day long, not having to go to the gym to, you know, furiously try to make up for their day sitting at their office. Um, so the so they're eating wisely, mostly a whole food plant-based diet. They're moving naturally because their life is underpinned with purpose. They're surrounded by a small group of people that help keep them doing the right things. And they live in places where the healthy choice is the easy choice. And it's that cluster of factors that helps people make it to 100. And but notice I didn't say anything about superfoods. Uh, you know, if I can help it, there'll never be a blue zone superfood because in my opinion, all superfood is bullshit and it's marketing and it's it's not going to save you. We have no supplements. I'm not a believer in supplements for the vast majority of people. Uh, there's not the blue zone diet plan because these things make money, but there's no documented uh, instance where they actually help you make longer, help you live longer. Um, and, and so Blue Zones is very much taking, uh, in, in many cases, the wisdom of your great grandmother and applying it back into a modern context. I love this. And I love how you say it. they almost make it easy to do because number one, you're surrounded. We've always known this, our, our you know, top five friends, we're most likely to eat like them and most likely to weigh similar to them. And we're most likely to do the kind of things they do. So if all of our top friends, you know, go out and binge drink every weekend, it's more likely that we're, we're going to do that as well. So hey, correct. I that you talk about that. Um, what was the most surprising thing that you found in your study of the blue zones? Was there something that kind of surprised you in any way? Yes. None of these people try to live longer. They don't, none of, not one of them pursue health. They're, they're not mustering presence of mind or calling an 800 number or <laughs> working out or none of the things we do to stay healthy. Uh, the big insight is instead of trying to change your, and change your behavior, the secret is changing your environment. Because in every one of these blue zones, it's their environment. It's the hundred or so unconscious micro decisions they're making every day throughout the day that is adding up to an extra 10 years of life expectancy as opposed to, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get up, I'm going to join CrossFit and I'm going to work out every day. Or, yeah. you know, I'm going to get on the keto diet, I'm going to stay on the keto diet, which never works. Um, it's our unconscious decisions that we have make a far bigger difference in our health than our conscious decisions. Gosh, I love that because that makes it easier too when we start to change our mindset and our friends and our environment. And gosh, BJ Fogg and uh, uh, James Clear, there's been some great books there about keeping ha healthy habits. And most of them are incorporating it into our identity of who we are. And what you're really describing is this is just who they are. They're the, the what their great grandparents taught them to do and how to live. Yeah, yes. Perhaps. Mm -hmm. I would argue, though, that if you took a very unhealthy American and whose parents ate McDonald's and Burger King and Doritos and put that person in Ikaria or Nicoya, not where we stayed, but inland, um, they would start shedding pounds. Uh, they would get metabolically healthy. Uh, again, I don't think it's about consciously changing habits or consciously changing lifestyle in any case. All they do is live their, they live their life the way their grandparents did. It doesn't require sacrifice. It doesn't require um, assessing your food or measuring your food or, or limiting what you take. Um, but it's all about shaping your environment. I'll give you the best example. You take certain counties in Kentucky, America, where the life expectancy is 20 years less than say Boulder, Colorado, or uh, Ogden, Utah, or Santa Barbara, California. Is it because people in those three cities are better, better Americans or have more discipline or their parents love them more than people in Kentucky? No, it's because uh, in, in Boulder, Colorado, it's easier to walk or bike across town than it is to drive. Uh, it's very, you have very easy access to healthy food. You have very easy access to uh, outdoor recreation. And the people around you are way more apt to call you up and say, let's go do a hike 
then let's go to the wiener roast or to the ball game and sit around and drink beer and eat potato chips. So my the big revelation, and I'm, I'm kind of a contrarian or a disruptor on this point, uh, until America starts figuring out we need to shape our environment to make it easier to move more, eat less, eat better, more plant-based, socialize more, and know and live our purpose, we're not going to see a big change in the $4.4 trillion healthcare bill that we're shelling out every year to, you know, today. Yeah, that makes so much sense. And of course, I'm right near Boulder, Colorado. And you're right, anyone who comes into town or if I meet a friend, we're usually, hey, let's meet for a hike versus dinner or versus <laughs> it's the most common um, option for us to meet to talk business is let's go on a hike. <laughs> so I love it. I love it. it. I love it. That's exactly right. So if you're just joining us, we are talking about um, Dan Buettner's new book, Blue Zone, Secrets to Living Longer. And this is a must get. This is one of those books you will come back to again and again. It's just very fun and beautifully done. Like I said, it's one of those that you could have on your coffee table and flip through, or you could read cover to cover and get tips every single time you pick it up. So really, really worth it. The last thing I want to end with, Dan, is your last, I don't know, second to last chapter, your rules to live by. And you've got a lot of different rules to live by, but maybe just share with our audience a few of your top We've kind of talked about diet. We've talked about the environment connection, but what's some practical things that people could do um, in your rules to live by uh, that would make a difference in their life and their health? The first one, instead of going on a diet, is get your hands on a good book, that uh, a, a plant-based cookbook. You know, I've written Blue Zone Kitchen, but there's lots of other good ones out there. And take a few Sunday afternoons Uh, Sit down with your family, identify a handful of recipes every Sunday that you could cook as a family, learn how to cook them and taste them. At the end of the day, um, when it, when it comes to longevity, the most important, uh, the most important ingredient is taste. So if you cook your way through enough recipes until you find a half a dozen you love, my job is over. Taste is going to drive you back to that recipe. So that's a rule to live by. Uh, Number two, curate your immediate social circle very carefully. As you alluded to earlier, uh, if your three best friends are obese and unhealthy, there's a 150% better chance that you'll be overweight. So uh, uh, finding, I'm not telling you to dump your old unhealthy friends, but I will say proactively adding a couple friends, uh, people whose idea these days of recreation is playing pickleball. Uh, you know, Jeff's a big pickleball player and, and um, or um, gardening or biking, something active. Uh, not a bad idea to have a vegan or vegetarian in your immediate social network because they're going to show you where and how to make or find um, uh, delicious plant-based food. Um, that's uh, completely contagious. Uh, and also, I would say the other big rule to live by is take the time to know your sense of purpose. And what I mean by purpose is knowing what your values are. And I actually advocate to sit down and write them out. What am I? I'm Christian or uh, I'm a Republican or I'm a Democrat or uh, I care about women or I care about animals. Write them out. Then a separate column. What do you love to do? Well, I love to uh, get involved in, 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 in activism or... I love to fix things, or I love to solve arguments, whatever it is, write those down. Third column, what am I good at? Uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm really good at taking care of older people, whatever it is. Then look for the commonality in those three columns, and then write a fourth column is where can you put those gifts to work? For some people, a minority, it's their job. I would argue what you do, Jill, what I do, what our, we live our purpose. But that's only about 30% of Americans. The other 70% have to put their purpose to work. And purpose means nothing unless you're putting it to work. Uh, You have to do it either through a hobby or or through volunteerism. Far more powerful than you think. So why am I talking about purpose? Because we know, and this comes from a National Institutes on Aging study, we know that people who are living their purpose live about eight years longer than people who are rudderless in life. I can't make any money off of that. Um, Stephen Gundry can't make any money off of your purpose. 
But there's better research, there's better evidence that living a purpose-driven life will make you live longer than just about anything else. And uh, so those are three rules. That would mm, tremendous. And if you want with. more, they're in the book. Please get your copy because this is such a worthwhile um, read. And like I said, it's one that you're going to come back to again and again. Um, last thing, Dan, is what it sounds like this is obviously your work. How long, first of all, quick question, how long ago did you start working on Blue Zones? How many years have you been studying this? 20 years. Wow. 20 years this year. Okay. So a long time. I thought I was going to write a cover story for National Geographic and move on to something, but it, for, it becomes, first of all, it un, unfolds into this beautiful, my work over the past you know, 11 years, I've been worked with 72 American cities that have adopted Blue Zones principles. And I've actually been able to lower the BMI and raise the life expectancy of entire cities. And um, so I just find new ways to apply it. I have um, a whole line of whole plant-based uh, frozen foods, Blue Zones frozen foods coming out uh, in November at Whole Foods. Mm. So there's different ways to sort of evangelize this way of uh, of living. Yeah. And what I love is it, it's clearly part of your passion and purpose in life. What changed the most for you in the 20 years of you studying Blue Zones, like your personal habits, your activities, your connections, what was the biggest change for you? And as you learned the Blue Zone data? I'm plant-based. I, I don't eat meat anymore. And um, I, I eat very little processed foods every once in a while in a week moment. Uh, I know that um, being social is better for me than working a few more hours. So yeah, you're very hard to get me to do any work after 5 p.m. or even after 4. Um, I live in walkable communities very consciously. I, I live in Miami, very walkable part of Miami. Uh, I lived in Santa Barbara before. And um, I, 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 my friends, I've let my kind of unhealthy friends go a little bit. Not that I dump them, but I'm really proactive of finding cool healthy friends, um, because I know they're going to impact my life and my mood. Um, So a lot of the wisdom I've I've discovered, I put to work in my life. Amazing. Well, we see it. We see it reflected. And again, I think that's what makes you such a incredible, um, really icon in this work and bringing it to it because you walk the walk. And you, you, you live what you talk about. And that means a lot because not everybody's out there doing that and doing the work and then transforming. So I cannot say enough. Thank you for what you brought to the world. Um, this new book, like I said, last thing, last time I'll show it here, grab your copy, Blue Zone Secret to Living Longer. It'll be out when you hear this podcast. Um, and if you're ever in Boulder in the winter, I'll take you skiing in the summer. I'll take you hiking. <laughs> so we'll do. Uh, that's, 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 a, that's a good deal. I'll take you up on that. And by the way, if anybody has uh, other questions, I always answer my own um, um, Instagram. I'm at Dan Butner. And, um, if you said that, if you have a question, I'll be happy to answer it. And it was really a delight. To, first of all, meeting you in person twice and now meeting you over, over the airwaves here. So I hope we get to see each other more often, Joe, you're doing fantastic work and, and, um, I, it, you're very articulate and you are a great evangelist for, um, uh, functional medicine and, uh, Glad to be part of your tribe. Oh, thank you, Dan. And last thing is, where can people find your book, your website? You said Dan Butner for Instagram. I'll just repeat that. We'll have the links wherever you're watching or seeing this. What about the website for the book and uh, for finding more about you? DanButner.com and Butner is B-U-E-T-T-N-E-R. And we have a free newsletter that uh, free of advertisement. And you can get that at DanButner.com. The book, you know, I always prefer people buy books in bookstores, but you can also get it on Amazon. Um, I have four New York Times bestsellers. And, and this book is meant to be a, a easy to use guide to harnessing the wisdom of the longest of people to help you live longer. And um, yeah, Instagram. I probably do more on Instagram than anything else. Yeah, so get on there and follow Dan. Um, thanks again, Dan. What a pleasure to talk to you again. It's absolute delight. I'm sending you a telephonic <laughs> hug. <laughs> <You too. laughs>